Hey guys, this is Tim from Tim's Electronics Lab and welcome back to a new video. Now in this video, I'll be showing you how to build yet another reflow oven. There are obviously a couple of things you'll need. To begin with, we need a solid state relay that's controlled with a DC signal. Now I'll put a link to this in the description. This is the 25 amps module, which should be plenty of current to handle our reflow oven. Then you're going to need two K-type uh, thermocouples and you'll need to connect these little funky pins to the end to allow them to be screwed into the MAX6675 thermocouple board. This is a K-type thermocouple controlled with an read-only SPI interface. You also need two of them. The, the two makes for a upper and lower temperature and you could compensate that because there are two heating elements in your kitchen tabletop oven. Of course you'll need the oven, just a regular oven. Now as you can see I've already applied some aluminum tape. This is uh, heat shielding aluminum tape up to 400 degrees. Uh, you'll need an oven with a upper and lower uh, heating element as you're able to see There's one down here and there's one up there uh, so yeah and You could control them individually using two solid-state relays, but I'm not doing that I'm controlling both and I'm controlling the temperature based on the uh, average between the two now you're going to need three capacitors now Two of them will be connected uh, with the thermocouple uh, so you get a much more smoother output and it doesn't fluctuate that much. I am using 2.2 microfarad capacitors, 50 volt 2.2 microfarad. Uh, so yeah, those results are fine for me. And for the other capacitor you'll need a 47 microfarad 16 volt. Well, or similar. Now that capacitor is used to smooth out the output of this HLK PMO3 240 volts AC to 3.3 volts DC converter. So you get a nice and stable 3.3 volts signal. Now you'll also need three 1K resistors. Those are pull-up resistors. You are going to yeah, obviously need a Note MCU. Now this is the bigger version. And currently when we look at an empty PCB, there are no pinouts for the smaller version, but I will uh, include them and I will also fix the problem that you can't put two thermocouple modules next to each other. Obviously you're going to need a PCB. Now the Gerber files are in the description. Well, actually there. Uh, located inside the GitLab repository and that's located inside the description. You'll need a couple of female headers uh, that's used to connect the Note MCU uh, to the board. Of course we want this thing to be removable and not um, soldered in place permanently which makes for a much better and easier repair uh, if this thing gets damaged. Now you'll also need a fuse holder. This is the one that you can put a fuse in like this and then screw it back together. You'll need one of those and I think I've got a 2 amp fuse in there. Is there anything else? 2 screw terminal block and a 3 screw terminal block that's used to connect the solid state relay and the AC. And you will also need uh, four PCB standoffs. Now I was only able to find three, so I will be using three today. But that's not a problem. Now let's actually get started with soldering this PCB.
this fuse that goes into the back of the case and you can replace it from the outside so screw that out put this in here and now you can screw this in and this will Just cracked. Shit. You want to run two wires from the out of the fuse, one that goes straight to the solid state relay, and the other that goes. That we've just soldered. Like this. And I'll be mounting the solar set relay like this over here. Uh, I've exposed a longer piece of copper on this side because it will make a nice little bend that goes around the screw of the solar set relay. And with that, the whole area of the Release input terminal is connected. I was also thinking about using the little bell that you hear when the oven is done. That is completely mechanical. So you have to set it manually each time you start the oven. This thing, it will actually go in like this and it will attach to this piece over here. All right, so now. The solid state relay is in its place, and it's, it's in position, and it's secured, and it's all ready to be used. Now, unfortunately, I was planning on mounting this to this side of the case, but we're not able to do so, because there simply isn't enough space. So what I'll do instead is I'll just mount it to the outside cover of this thing which goes on like this and yeah, I think that over here is a nice and secure place for it so it should go somewhere around here let's do it like that
So I think it's time to power this thing up. I've got the AC wire over here. But first we actually uh, need to flash the firmware. So after you've uploaded your code, please make sure that nothing that shouldn't be touching something is touching something. And plug it in to see if it all works. Do a final check before you actually apply power to it. Make sure that the faces are correct and that you're not shorting things out, which I'm not. And I feel confident to apply power to it. So here we go. So we could see the Note MCU blink. And let's actually go to the web page of the oven. It's still connecting. So please make sure to select desktop page. And over here you can see the reflow oven. Now it's a little bit of a misformed screen here and there. So yeah, that's the mobile page that isn't working right yet. So let's disconnect it again. And let's actually assemble this thing. There we have it guys. There is our completed reflow oven ready to reflow some PCBs. So let's actually give it a quick test to see if everything works. I don't have a PCB yet that I can put in. Oh, I can obviously put on some, put this one in to see how well the temperature is of this PCB. So let's prepare, let me prepare the oven and I'll see you at the front side. So I'm at the front of the oven and let's actually plug it in. Before I forget, otherwise it isn't doing anything. And let's put in this PCB. It's an empty PCB with nothing on there. And let's just close the oven. And I'll turn off this ring light for you. So you can hopefully see the oven glow. So over here at the computer, we've got the yet another reflow control UI. You've got a couple of options. Uh, I uploaded a detailed reflow profile that will follow this curve. So I'll click the play button to load it and just click start and it should start the preheating stage and the oven should start to do something. So guys, it turned out that there also was a PCB fault. The um, negative pole of the solid state relay was not connected to ground, which caused the solid state relay to well, yeah, absolutely do nothing. So I fixed that and we're going to turn on the oven right now so again you're able to upload certain profiles um, and when you click the play button the profile loads and when you click start the oven starts to preheat and right now i can hear the heating elements uh, move a little at 60 hertz so the temperature is rising we should start seeing the oven glow red hot in a few seconds of oh, preheat failed yeah this just sometimes happens but just click reset and start again and it will start all over again let's watch the oven funny because you can really see a lot of infrared on the camera or my white balance is just way off 
but it really looks like infrared and this is still absolutely cold And the heat reflection tape is really doing its job. I can lay my hand on the top of the oven. And yeah, you know, I feel that it's hot, it's active, but my hand doesn't get immediately burnt. So that's really good. Now the thing is ready. So I can put it open and you can immediately see all the heat waves coming off. Ooh. Yeah, it cooled down a little bit too fast, I think, because the thing's still... Uh... Why is it sizzling so much? Where are my tweezers? I mean, this thing. Well, the big ground plane got a little bit wobbly bubbly. That's not really how it's supposed to be. But this, this thing is absolutely hot. I can see the heat waves coming from the PCB. After some investigation, it was due to the temperature sensors uh, being misplaced. Uh, they were placed on the outside and they weren't placed on the actual thermal mass that the PCB was laying on. So I stick them to this little yeah, tray. Um, but before that I proceeded to clean the tray with a torch. Make sure to use proper safety equipment so I cleaned the tray with a torch burned off all the red residues and it made for a quite a nice and clean tray so as I was testing the various profiles I uh, started to optimize the PID controller a little which didn't work out really well as you can see the PID controller did not ramp up fast enough for the final reflow temperature target and if it did it overshot the temperature target by at least 30 or 40 degrees which is going to melt the components now this is one of the test results that I've had this was good enough but at the time I didn't feel like it was good enough I thought that the oven was capable of a much better and accurate result uh, this was before the isolation of the oven with the uh, tape so you can clearly see the difference between the two I've also tried proportional on measure but that did make things better a little bit but also it made things worse so if you do know some good resources about PID controllers and temperature controlling please let me know down below and I'll uh, make a part 2 with a improved PID controller Oh, hey, hello. Uh, I, I wasn't expecting you over here. Well, if you want, you can also view two other videos of me. So make sure to click them. And don't forget to subscribe and like so you always get notified of my new videos.